Our friend Sawyer Hartman is coming by today who is a professional photographer and YouTuber who's been doing this for a long, long time. The person who eats the lemon puts themselves on the registry as somebody who will donate bone marrow in the event that they're a match. It's, I mean, it's a surgical process. It's kind of a terrifying experience. Our friend Sawyer Hartman is coming by today who is a professional photographer and YouTuber who's been doing this for a long, long time. He's gonna talk from the perspective of a photographer. But what I think is really interesting about this bit is that if you listen closely, as a non-photographer, you can see the techniques that he uses in everyday things like shows, movies, websites, advertisement, all over the place. It's really this sense that as a photographer, you aren't just taking photos, you're visualizing culture. Today we're gonna to teach you something about photography. My mom took photos my entire life. She always had a camera in her hands and when I was about 10, my mom took me to Yellowstone National Park and I had a Canon Rebel X film camera, a little DSLR or SLR back then. And I remember I saw a moose and all these people were behind this rope taking pictures of this moose. I was small enough, I went under the rope, through bushes, and like two hours later, got close enough to the moose that as soon as he lifted his head, I got a shot, and it like filled the whole frame. And ever since then, like, I've loved photography. I brought a little book with me, I keep my notes in, because I wanted to give you guys like practical things that you really could be using and need to know as a photographer. Tip number one is, until you really know what you're doing with your settings in your camera, turn the dial to a setting called AV. Put you in a couple of different lighting scenarios, and show how the camera fucking does it for you. Yeah. You set where you want the f-stop, right? and then it changes all of the other settings to make it exposed. If I take a photo of him here on manual, I have to keep adjusting my settings when really all I care about is depth of field. Span. Yeah, right there. Traditionally, it's a hard shot. But you can see the camera still exposes perfectly. I didn't know about it for like seven years. It changed my life. A big moment for me in getting better at photography and filmmaking, you gotta understand how the lens is gonna make the audience feel and then design your shots so that they can actually feel it. I would recommend you get your hands on 14, 24, 35, 50, an 85, and a 135. When someone says, I need a photo of this and I want people to feel like this, you'll go, give me the 50. Like I was saying, it's important when you're learning focal lengths to understand what's used for what type of shot. This 35 millimeter lens, let's pretend the MTA, that little house in the back, that's a waterfall we want to get. 35, we can get a shot that makes it all about our subject and the location. It's interacting together. But when we switch to a 50, it's so much blurrier and compressed. It's really become a photo about our subject and subject only. Then when you shoot on something like a 200 mil, it's literally just the subject, just the headshot. Nothing in the background can even be seen. This tip will help solve the issue of your photos looking like everyone else's photos when you shoot in the same location. Now, I know a lot of photographers, when they roll up somewhere, they wanna get the photo everyone else is taking. This is fine for safety. But once you have that photo, crawl into a bush and shoot through the leaves, get behind a railing, and just find some way to interact with your environment. It's kind of break up your photography and just have fun by using things like a prism or these things I found on Amazon that make really cool colors. Or you can actually figure out how by using things like this and using these weird, these weird tools, you can start to give your photos a really nice personality. Paint with light and color. If you're a black and white photographer, if you've ever even experimented with black and white photography, then you know light is very, very important. It's the reason that I am now highlighted in this frame in the hallway and things in the background don't really seem important. If you put a light at the end of the hallway behind somebody and you highlighted one thing, well, that could make it look like you're trying to get someone to look back there. Yeah, exactly. See how the warm and cold contrast actually separate me from the scene? If you're taking a photo of just completely snow-covered field, if you put someone with a bright orange jacket and they just pop. You can easily remember this rule because painting with light and painting with color both seek to add contrast to your photo. Okay. <laughs> last one. Stop shooting thousands of photos a day. I do it too. And recently in the last year and a half, I've started losing my inspiration to bring my camera with me. Now, when I go shoot for an hour and a half with a model at sunset, 
I'll come home with maybe 1200 photos. Out of the 1200 photos, there'll be four or five that I want to use. And the process of narrowing down those photos to the one you want to edit is actually more challenging than taking the photo in the first place. Something I did to be able to re-spark my own creativity was the other day I went out and I bought a 1972 Polaroid camera. What's important is the roll of film only holds eight photos. Finding the one, sh when you only have eight shots to take, it actually brings in a whole nother layer of confidence. You can start figuring out what might look good, what you think looked good before, and you start building yourself like a little catalog of knowledge of what makes a good photograph when you shoot on things like this. And when you bring that to things like digital, it can save you a ton of time. Ask yourself, what do you want your photo to say? Where are you? Is it somewhere dangerous? Is it somewhere safe? Do you feel safe? Do you want your audience to feel safe? These are all simple things that you need to start asking yourself so you can create a photo that actually like makes people feel. If you're just starting out, don't feel bad about shooting thousands of photos. It's very, very important that you come to understand the settings and how your camera works. But once you have the skill, for one week, put in a four gig card or even a two gig card and leave it in there the whole week. And you're only gonna have maybe 50 photos to play with. Just give me. Right. <clears throat> Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Sean Duris nominated us to participate in the Lemons for Leukemia Challenge. You eat a lemon and you call out three other people who then do the same thing to raise awareness for bone marrow donation to help save lives of people affected by leukemia. But I think it's only right that if we accept the challenge, the person who eats the lemon puts themselves on the registry as somebody who will donate bone marrow in the event that they're a match. Describe as a surgical process. Right, well they're breaking your bone. Yeah, they inject you with a needle that's like this long. Shove the, the needle vertically through your femur, through your butt, I think. The side effects of donating bone marrow could be, from what I've read, you could feel like you're getting over a cold, or you could feel fatigued and tired for up to a month. Carmichael, our brave, brave boy Carmichael, has decided that he will sign up. Let me pass it on to three more people. I think we're gonna pass it on to three more people. <laughs> you are volunteering. Carl. I wanna. You're just, volunteering. Let me this. Google the side effects of this. Your body, your choice. More than 10,000 people in the US a year are diagnosed with life threatening diseases such as leukemia and lymphoma, for which a stem cell transplant is the best and only treatment. Of trouble walking for a few days. No more standing desk. But it may take a couple of weeks before you feel fully recovered. But you can save a life, you can save someone's life. Joining, we're willing to donate? Yes, and then I agree. 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 I suppose you need a knife for this, huh? No, I'm just gonna go right in. Oh, you're just... <laughs> All, right. All right. I'm gonna go right in. <laughs> He's going for it. Dude. Oh wait, I wasn't recording. He's going for Shit. it. Oh, you weren't recording? No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. You weren't recording? Let's do it again. Oh. Mm. Dude, just you dripping juice. Oh. <laughs> mm. I challenge <laughs> Film Riot, Anna Akana, and Sawyer Hartman. Good job, man. Can you do it on an iPhone 4? Oh yeah, of course. Oh, <laughs> you're really putting me through a ringer today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing to say I can do it. Let's. So if I can get the split just right, I might be able to make it look like there's two of them. It's always important to find the strengths of your camera, and if it's not resolution and it's size, put it in some really weird places. Are you comfortable sitting here? I'm just trying to find the lines of where I am and try to accentuate it. The reason this shot's interesting is because all the fences all of these poles, all the lines, everything draws your eye directly to him. When someone looks at the photograph, there's a lot going on to interest them, but the subject's very clear. We were able to get super close to the razor wire, whereas before with a different camera, I probably would not have felt comfortable doing that. Something that's very interesting to me is because we all hold our phones, we have them with us. These are pretty much our best friends now. You will never get a more natural photo of someone who's not a professional model than if you take it on an iPhone. If I ask someone to take my picture with my 1DX, I look like a deer in headlights who doesn't know what to do. You snap a photo of me on an iPhone, I probably didn't even notice. That's gonna be my profile picture. That's it, I hope you guys learned something. If you're interested in finding out more, head on over to Sawyer's channel where he puts his techniques to the test. Check it out, give him a like. I'm sure you'd appreciate it.